Out of the almost 100 new top-level domain names that have been launched in the past two weeks, two TLDs stand out to me in the top 10 list. They're Chinese TLDs called IDNs, or Internationalized Domain Names. We're going to learn why so many domains have been sold in the couple of weeks that these Chinese TLDs have been in existence, why some notable investors have purchased these domains, and if the opportunity still exists for new investors to register some valuable domains. Stay tuned. I have three short sponsor messages before we get into today's show. First, if you have a great domain name and nothing to show when people visit, you're missing out on potential advertising revenue, leads, and partnership opportunities. NicheWebsites.com can build you a site quickly with a price option to suit any need. But as their tagline says, they don't just build websites, they build businesses. Second, if you're buying or selling a domain name or a portfolio and you want an estimate of its value, Estebot.com is the place to go. Just like you'd visit Zillow.com to get an estimate of a house value, Estebot.com provides key information about the most important statistics so you can make an informed decision based on data. Finally, DNX.com is a domain name exchange that uses a reverse auction platform to provide fair market prices for quality domain names that are manually filtered by an experienced broker. At DNX.com, domain prices drop until someone decides the price is right. But don't wait too long or the domain you love might be purchased by someone else. All three sponsors have a clickable banner in the upper right-hand corner of DomainSherpa.com. Here's your program. Hey everyone, my name is Michael Seiger and I'm the publisher of DomainSherpa.com, the website where you come to learn how to become a successful domain name investor and entrepreneur directly from the experts. I visit NTLDStats.com fairly often now that new top-level domain names are rolling out almost daily. I want to understand how quickly TLDs get out, how fast they grow, if they're hitting a plateau, and if there are opportunities for investment still. Two of the top 10 new TLDs serve China with Chinese characters to the right of the dot, which is pretty interesting. Why is China important? Well, to start, China has the largest population in the world with nearly with over 1.3 billion people, the largest middle class in the world with over 200 million people. It's the number one destination for foreign investment, the number one exporter to the United States and the second largest economy in the world, second only to the United States. Today, we're joined by someone who is no stranger to China, having lived there for more than a decade with his family. I'd like to welcome Simon Cousins, Chief Marketing Officer for the TLD Registry, what Simon calls, quote, the home of the essential new Chinese TLDs, dot Chinese online, and dot Chinese website. Simon, welcome to the show. Thanks, Michael. It's a real pleasure to be on Domain Sherpa. Let's start with the Chinese marketplace, Simon. I've already described why China is an economy that investors, all investors, should pay attention to. Let's drill down to the to the domain name space. Why is China so appealing that your company, TLD Registry, would focus on Chinese character top level domains? Well, you know, it was six years ago, a little over six years ago now that um, the, the founding team of TLD Registry saw one tiny little news in brief article in a Finnish newspaper that said that in the future, this group that very few of us had heard of, ICANN, was going to open up to new top level domains. So we saw this tiny little news in brief and we thought, well, that sounds like a, a good business for us to, to consider getting into. So we originally were um, considering uh, regular ASCII or English uh, TLDs, but the, several of the founders are Finnish and one of the national characteristics of Finnish entrepreneurs is that because it's such a small country and such a, um, a country with such little sunlight <laughs> through most of the year, that Finnish entrepreneurs really need to go out of the country. Look at companies like Rovio, for example, or Kone or Nokia. You know, they, they, the, the market inside of Finland is, is simply too small to support substantial sized businesses. So Finns typically go out, as do Australians and, you know, other, uh, uh, other, other populations from, um, from national economies that aren't necessarily large enough to be, to be, uh, to be large consumption economies. So we looked at the most difficult um, TLDs that we could possibly get involved with and the largest economies that we could export them to. And when you apply both of those, um, 
both of those filters, then China just pops out as a, as an obvious uh, target to be um, to be building a TD, TLD business. So TLD Registry is offering .chinese online and .chinese website. I made the mistake on a recent domain Sherpa discussion about two weeks ago um, of saying that they were .online and .website in Chinese. Adam Dicker, who is one of our Sherpas on the panel for the domain Sherpa discussion, corrected me and said they're not .chinese um, or they're not .online and .website in Chinese. They are dot Chinese online and dot Chinese website, but I'm still confused, Simon. You know, I, I I got my record set straight, but then I went to your website in preparation for this interview, and it says, "quote When Chinese consumers search Baidu or Google for an online product or service such as hotels or shoes, they type in the search term hotels plus the Chinese word for online, the same characters as dot Chinese online." So. And then you say the Chinese word, and it's in Chinese, is the precise and only translation for the English word online. So is it not correct to say that your two extensions, dot Chinese online and dot Chinese website, are dot online in Chinese? Or is that wrong? Yeah, well, there's a lot of ambiguity between Chinese and, and translating Chinese into other languages, Michael. And we really wanted to be sure that um, the two TLDs and domain names inside of the two TLDs were as approachable as possible mm -hmm. by um, domain name investors and by end users all around the world. It was very important for us to build the market, uh, build the global market for our domain names and not simply focus on the China mainland market. So we took the decision um, some time ago to uh, introduce our TLDs in both the English language and the Chinese language. So when we're talking about our TLDs in the China speaking marketplace, whether that's China's mainland or Hong Kong or Taiwan or Singapore or right here in New York City where I am now, which is the biggest population of Chinese people outside of China, the Chinese people don't need to read the English words dot Chinese online or dot Chinese website. They see those two characters for dot Chinese online, which is pronounced Zai Xian. Now, they literally read the word Zai Xian and they hear exactly, Michael. So I they came prepared. The it's these two Chinese characters to the right of the dot. So this could be Simon dot. How do you pronounce it again, Simon? Yeah, the two characters, the one on the left is Zai and the one on the right is Xian, Zai Xian, which literally means online. Which means online in these it. Chinese characters. So it does but mean online in Chinese. It, it missed the exact match to the English word online. Ah. And the reason we, we selected online and the other TLD, which literally means Chinese language version website, and I'm going to give you a quick Chinese lesson, uh, Michael. The very first character after the dot, it's pronounced Zhong. It's the character that Chinese people use to stand for their country. It's a little bit like saying USA rather than United States of America. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it's a pictogram of a rectangle with a line right down the middle. Mm -hmm. So that character literally means middle or center. So if you want to say you're in the center of something, you'd say you are at Zhong, you're at the center. And the word for China in Chinese is middle kingdom or the kingdom at the middle of the world. Mm -hmm. So the first character in China, Zhong or middle, stands for China. The second character, the one in the middle, if you look at it, you know, with a slight squint, it looks like a writing desk with a pen or a brush on top. It does, yeah. And that's literally what it is. It's a pictogram of a writing desk with a little brush. It's a very ancient character. And what you do when you sit down at a writing desk with a brush is you write words, you write language. So you put those together, Zhong Wen, you get Chinese language. The third character with the X's, that's literally a pictogram of two fish which have been caught in a net. The fish are the X's and the net is the, um, the almost enclosed rectangle. Uh -huh. And that's the pictogram that's used in China, meaning net, because it literally means <laughs> net. It's what you catch fish with. So you put those three characters together in Chinese, Zhong, Wen, Wang. That literally means China language website. Love it. I love now, it. I love those characters. And these, these characters um, are characters that go back thousands of years, right? Yeah, they really do. Well, as you probably know, there are, there are two popular or commonly used character sets in Chinese. It's the so-called traditional um, characters, of which there are about 40,000, and they go back about 5,000 years. And since 1949, the simplified Chinese characters have been used in the mainland and Singapore and some other markets. And they're simpler to learn and simpler to write than the old traditional ones. But both are in, uh, in common usage uh, pretty much all around the world. In fact, Chinese people, we understand, make up about one-fifth of all humanity. Wow. So we think that's a pretty good market. <laughs> that is a pretty large market. <laughs> so they, you have defined them for 
non-Chinese people like myself easily dot Chinese online and dot Chinese website so I can understand what it is. But it's not incorrect to say it's dot online in Chinese and dot website in Chinese. Correct. Okay, excellent. And um, why did you choose these two phrases out of uh, these two Chinese words out of, you know, the, the millions of words that you could have chosen? Right, right, exactly. Yeah, going back five to six years ago, we did a very detailed, very in-depth statistical analysis of Chinese search terms. Our, our team in Beijing and Hong Kong uh, largely uh, executed this research program. It took around eight months in total. We, we discovered through the very detailed um, uh, search results that um, when Chinese consumers were most commonly searching for a product or a service, they weren't just, just searching for keywords. And this is a phenomenon that you see across the Chinese-speaking world. Chinese netizens or internet users don't tend to use keywords so much as they use phrases. So when a Chinese consumer is looking for shoes online, well, she doesn't just type in the keyword shoes. She's typing in, you know, cheap shoes online or wedding shoes online. Now, there are other words that substitute for online. For example, store, um, uh, easy to buy, uh, free delivery, and so on. But we found through our statistical analysis that the word for online, which is what was selected for our TLD, was by far the most commonly used phrase for those kinds of searches. And similarly, for the other TLD that we have, .chinese website, when Chinese consumers are searching for the Chinese language version site of a uh, company, which is not Chinese, Let's say Mrs. Wong has just has just acquired a new Nokia telephone from her son, who might have just come back from from Europe. She switches the phone on. The interface is in English. She she can't figure out how to use her phone. So naturally, she'll go to Baidu, the Chinese Google, if you will, and she'll search for the manual for the phone. But she'll want the Chinese language version of the manual. So what she does is she types in Nokia, which is the Chinese version of Nokia, Nokia. Zhongwen Wang, which means Nokia's Chinese language website. Mm -hmm. So we think that by offering domain names with these two most commonly used modifiers, we're able to help our registrants to create domain names which perfectly match search phrases, which, as theory has it, will uh, rank higher in search engine results pages for Baidu and other search engine searches. That makes sense. So not only are you satisfying the user intent, if somebody sees, you know, a keyword or keyword phrase dot online all in Chinese, that is exactly what they're looking for. But then it also may, if somebody builds a website and, and has great content, it might help them rise up the ranks of google.cn and baidu.cn. I, I guess Baidu operates on cn or dot com. I can't remember. Yeah, Baidu operates on both. Yeah. On both. Yeah, um, but it's actually not, it's, it's not a theory. Um, it, it, it's a fact, we, or at least we think it's a fact, because organizations such as the UN, such as New York Times, Forbes magazine, BBC World Service, even m and they, they have all selected the Chinese characters, Zhong Wen Wang, which is the same as our TLD, mm -hmm. for their Chinese language version sites. This is absolutely the standard way of describing your non-Chinese brand, its availability in the Chinese language. So when one of these sites selects, um that that phrase dot chinese web or chinese website uh, after their name is it yeah. their name chinese website dot cn that they're currently using oh uh, look hmm. or well, do they use dot com or do they use some other look some like a, a famous brand might be mcdonald's uh -huh. so currently mcdonald's is their 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 standard website in china is m c d o n a l d s dot c o m dot c n now, that's fine, and it makes sense to you and I, mm -hmm. but to the average Chinese consumer who does not speak English, who has rarely seen the English letters McDonald's, because in China, McDonald's isn't McDonald's, it's my dong al. So for the average Chinese consumer to have to type in mcdonalds.com.cn, it's very cumbersome and annoying for Chinese people. Chinese people really want to be able to type in their own language, my dong al. Dot, say Xian or say Zhong Wenwang. So you know, typing in one's own language is always, you know, always preferable. We, we sometimes like to like to ask our friends to imagine if Tim Berners Lee had been a Chinese guy <laughs> twenty five years ago, if the web had been invited had had been invented by a Chinese guy. Well, we could have all been typing in Chinese characters for the last twenty five years. Right. And, yeah. You know, into our URLs. That's so, kind of how the Chinese people feel. So just so I understand what the what the life of the average Chinese consumer is, 
do they have a computer or do they only operate or primarily operate off of their mobile phone? Yeah, almost entirely mobile phones. And 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 while the Apple iPhone has done very well in terms of um, market awareness in China, overwhelmingly mobile devices, smart mobile devices are Android. And this is simply because most Chinese people don't have the same kinds of disposable incomes that, 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 that Westerners do. Many do have that kind of disposable income, but the vast majority don't. So given Android is free, um, it has become quickly become the ubiquitous operating system for for smartphones, and a smartphone can be had in a big city in China for less than a hundred US dollars. Wow. So it's really really common for either quite young or, or, or Chinese people of a very modest financial means to have an inexpensive Chinese smartphone. And I tell you, they're not typing into ASCII keyboards on their smartphones. They're literally using their fingertip to write Chinese characters. Or, so that was going to be my next question when they want to visit. When they want to visit a website or they want to do a search on Baidu, let's say, yep. uh, what do they use a keyboard or do they swipe Chinese characters like you're just mentioning? Yeah, with the fingertip. Yeah, so so I can I can simply go to Baidu um, by by opening my web browser in my Chinese phone and and ask to, and talking to the Android phone ah, saying go okay. to Baidu, and, and then once they're there, they can either use voice recognition for in Chinese, of course, for uh, for their search, or they can just tap into the um, into the search box and and write Chinese characters with their fingertips as they do as we write English all right. day every day. So yeah. so that massive middle class, the average Chinese consumer, are using smartphones primarily they're either dictating their search or they're swiping characters they're not using a keyboard oh you know what keyboards still exist all over the country yeah. on pcs and, and and many many pcs in china are relatively cheap relatively low spec low spec pcs and many can be quite old with very old versions of windows but you know in my 12 or 13 years in china so far but for every one of those years even on the most nasty, dirty, old Windows 98 computer, there'll often be a small fingertip or or stylus input device right next to the keyboard or the mouse. These can be had for a dollar in China in any of the big markets in China. So so Chinese character input into PCs going way back to Windows 98 yeah. is, 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 is the standard. Yeah. So yes, ASCII keyboards exist all over the country, but uh, on smartphones, it's kind of annoying to have to tap out on an ASCII when it's not your language, when yeah. your language is is, is pictogram based. And on the average PC, um, also character input is, has, uh, has been standard for many years. There, there, is, there is also a, a method of typing in Chinese on ASCII keyboards. Most kids, most you know, school kids and university kids know how to use it. Um, and it's how we, how we do use an ASCII keyboard to get Chinese into a, in, into a computer. But um, increasingly we think with, um, with the improving uh, voice recognition technologies, and, um, and touch technologies, ASCII keyboards will become less and less relevant, which means we think ASCII URLs will become less and less relevant in the Chinese speaking world. All right. So according to ntldstats.com, as of the day of this show, dot Chinese online had 30,795 registrations and dot Chinese website had 14,605. Are these numbers accurate according to your information, Simon? Yeah, no, actually, um, current numbers are, are, are quite, quite a little bit um, higher than that. Um, current numbers hovering around that the issue we have is that several of our registrants in China have not yet correctly configured the DNS servers mm. for some thousands of domain names which have already been sold to those registrants. Um, so as you know, until the DNS server is uh, entered into the into the domain name, um, it doesn't start to appear in the zone files. So according to our registry numbers, we have somewhere just north of 50,000 um, domain names um, uh, created across both of the TLDs. Okay, great. I'm glad, I'm, th I'm glad you mentioned that because that actually does put you in the top 10 for both those domains. Um, whereas today on NTLD stats, the dot Chinese website was number 11. So, you know, I, I wanted it to sound better. You actually do have better numbers. You got the top 10, two in the top 10. So it seems like you're adding between, you know, according to my rough figures, 30 to 200 domain names per day on dot Chinese over the past week, dot Chinese online, and maybe between 10 and 130 on dot Chinese website uh, per day over the past week. Will we see growth at these rates continuing? I think we'll see growth accelerating, Michael. Um, and, and of course, any any new TLD new TLD, TLD registry will will claim accelerating growth. But 
We believe that um, uh, as, as China has just come off its national, um, its four-day national vacation for May Day, uh, China returned to work after its national vacation uh -huh. only on Monday. Um, we'll continue to see accelerating numbers coming out of China. And we know that, um, uh, that the initial interest from Western domainers, um, domain name investors, uh, will also continue to accelerate in the West. And increasingly, we're seeing large brands come into the, to the TLDs. For example, uh, last week, we saw China's uh, category killer, uh, number one um, online apparel uh, retailer, a company called Vancel, V-A-N-C-L, um, transition across to their two-character Chinese brand name, dot online in our TLD, where previously they'd been at V-A-N-C-L, I think, dot C-O-M dot C-N. So as we see um, more and more large uh, large companies such as such as Vansel uh, come into the, especially the, the dot online uh, TLD, we'll, we'll see increasing numbers. Yeah. And, so, and, and, and I'm and I satisfied that our first week, as you, as you yeah. point out, in our first week of availability, uh, both of the TLDs um, leapfrogged um, uh, every other TLD into into the top ten, and I think that our online is still sitting at the number four position. But we do caution ourselves every morning not to get too wrapped <laughs> up in the uh, in the daily statistics. Sure, um, and and I did take a look at Vancel V A N C L dot com. I went to it. It um, displayed in Chinese characters for me, of course, because it's primarily serving a Chinese audience. Uh, they do have a billion over a billion dollars in sales, um, and so they selected dot Chinese online. So when I did a search for Vansel in Chinese dot Chinese online. It was the exact same site, just resolving at a different URL. Do you anticipate, you know, in your discussions with them, have they mentioned that they will be moving completely from dot com and redirecting it to their dot Chinese online website, or will they run both in parallel? Do you think? Yeah, it's a good question, Michael. I think I, I think if I was running um, uh, digital marketing for Vansel or, or any other company that was considering IDNs, not just our Chinese IDNs, but Russian IDNs or Hebrew IDNs or Japanese IDNs, I think you've got to look at the visitation numbers. So you know you want to see the number of referrers that are coming into your .com versus your IDN, and, and you'll see those numbers change over time. So you know you obviously want to be putting your attention uh, your, and spending your marketing dollars uh, in the URLs that are more likely to convert into clicks. Um, but I think it's really smart for companies like Vansel and many of the Western Fortune 500s that have also come into our TLDs to at least configure the Chinese IDN because when Chinese people are searching for Vansel uh, in Baidu, they're not typing in V-A-N-C-L. They're typing in the two Chinese characters that the company is actually called in China. The V-A-N-C-L is just really there as a as a convenience for non-Chinese. Right. So it's, it's perfectly sensible for a Chinese company with a Chinese name that sells to Chinese consumers to use a Chinese domain name because it's the same as their brand name. Right. We do know we do know that when a Chinese URL matches the Chinese content in the web page, because remember for, for the Chinese web, everything about the Chinese web is in Chinese. The the, the company, McDonald's, is, is already localized into Chinese. They've got a Chinese brand name, Mai Dan Ao. They've got Chinese websites. The, my Ronald McDonald has been Chinese, Chinese eyes with a Chinese name. Everything about the digital marketing for every brand, whether it be Chinese or, or major Western brand, has been localized into Chinese, except the URL. So when the URL matches, perfectly matches the content, then the URL does become a signal to the search engine optimization routines at Baidu or Google or the other uh, search engines that are used throughout the Chinese speaking world. So, I mean, no one, no one really knows outside of Baidu or Google how powerful a search single signal that is, but it's, it's a fact that the URL itself is a signal. So we believe that for brands to have a URL that perfectly matches their brand name and their website content, that will give them a boost in SEO. And considering the price of SEO consultants, mm. the price of a single domain name in Chinese is a pretty cheap investment in an SEO boost. Yeah, definitely. Um, according to information that you've shared with me, Simon, you've sold greater than $580,000 worth of premium domain names uh, in the first month. Yeah, that's right, Michael. So that is before going to general availability. These are premium domain names that your registry has reserved and then sold to, to people at a price higher than the um, regular registration cost. Yeah, exactly right. So um, we, we, we spent about nine months building our premium domain name list um, uh, line by line, name by name with our team uh, in Beijing, Hong Kong and, and here in New York City. And um, 
from the first auction which we held in the Chinese southern Chinese um, gaming capital of Macau on the second day of our land rush. Um, we, uh, we, we, we achieved um, terrific sales on that day. If I recall correctly, it was around $300,000 was taken on that day um, in premium name sales at auction. And the remainder have been private transactions uh, for domain name investors and for uh, end users uh, since, the, uh, since that, uh, that, 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 that auction in Macau. And most uh, of these auctions and, and private sales, are they too... You know, it, it, can you say that a majority are to American investors, Canadian investors, Chinese investors? You know, how do, how, where do you think people are coming from, if you can even say? Yeah, um, for, for the current premium domain name sales, the split would be about 30% to Chinese um, registrants and about 70% to Western registrants. But that 70% that's gone to Western registrants, that the investments are being made with an intention to develop sites or to um, otherwise monetize the premium names for Chinese consumers. And I should point out, not just Chinese consumers in China, but Chinese consumers in Singapore and New York and London and you know South Africa. Chinese consumers are everywhere and Chinese media and newspapers and websites are everywhere. Um, so, uh, so yeah, even, even though you've got uh, Western, like non-Chinese domain name investors um, coming into the TLDs, the, the content is still intended for Chinese consumers. Gotcha. And when you say 70% Western, you, you're not just talking about United States Western, you're talking about Europe Western? And... Yeah, no, we have investors from um, across Scandinavia, from France, from Canada, from Australia, mm -hmm. uh, from the United States, yep. uh, from the UK. All right, that makes sense. Um, so in the past, these IDNs, these internationalized domain names that are in a specific language uh, to a country have really only been interesting to the people in that country that speak that language and who have keyboards uh, maybe in that language or, or the ability to write in those special characters. Um, but what you're seeing is that it is changing with these new, with your two new TLDs, these new IDNs where a majority of them being registered are people who want to serve that country or invest in domain names that serve that country's population. Yeah, exactly right. You're exactly right, Michael. Um, so we, we think of it more in terms of Chinese language users than people who live in a given country. Um, because I, I mean, I have many friends here where I'm sitting right now in New York City that, that, that are Chinese and that speak Chinese at home. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'll be uh, heading out to Hong Kong, and it's the same story there. So there are many people that speak English in Hong Kong. It's almost ubiquitous, but you know, in Chinese is also also spoken in several different dialects, both Mandarin and Cantonese. Yeah, but so, the people um, that live like in New York, which is the second largest, you know, population of of Chinese, let's say, I'm, I'm yeah. not sure if that statistic is correct or not, but do they? When they go online, do they type in ASCII or do they type in Chinese? Well, if you're searching for Chinese news, for news from China or news in the Chinese language, then you're typing in Chinese or writing in Chinese. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're going to Baidu or Chihu or 360 or any of the other major sites and you're, you're searching in the Chinese language. Makes sense. For yeah. those of us in the United States, .com is definitely the, the preferred domain name extension. If I go to China right now, do a majority of Chinese people prefer a website in .com or .cn? Would you say? Yeah, I think I think there's a preference for um, domain name investors in China's mainland for .dot com. Uh, there is there certainly have been some excellent sales um, and high price sales of premium domain names in .dot cn, but there's a clear preference for .dot com over the uh, over the two um, the two options .dot com. And what about .cn. regular people? The the regular Chinese consumers? Do they have a preference? Do you think? Regular people, regular people just really dislike typing and typing English full stop. <laughs> um, and, and one of the reasons we think that the dot-com zone has continued to grow so strongly in China is because in China, it doesn't really matter whether you're typing an English word dot-com or a random number of, of, of English letters dot-com. Because to many Chinese people, even though it's, a, it's, a, it's an English word or a Chinese word, in ASCII, it isn't necessarily comprehensible. So, you know, Chinese people are accustomed to simply having to type in tgfxnd.com and that to resolve somewhere mm -hmm. because it's all the same to them. It's right. not their native language. Right. It's just symbols on a keyboard. Yeah, makes perfect sense. So what people may not understand is that 
um, a Chinese entrepreneur can register one of many variations of domain names. If an investor, you know, say we're interested in cats, for example, yeah. they wanted to start a cat online pet store, they could choose cat.com, cat.cn, Mao, which I probably butchered the pronunciation of, right. dot .com, yeah. uh, <laughs> Mao being the Chinese character for cat. And, and so, right. so I've got another pop up here. Um, so we've got cat.com, cat.cn, cat.chinese.chineseonline, um, Chinese right? So, so cat.online, basically. We've got Mao, uh, the Chinese character that you can register in .com. Right. You can reg register Mao in .cn, and then you can also register Mao.online. Quite right. You've left one off there, which would be M-A-O, which is the pinyin or the romanized mandarin. So you could be doing MAO in all of those extensions also. And that would be Mao, of course, in the uh, right. Chinese pinyin system. So if I were a Chinese, uh, regular, an average Chinese consumer, what would I most likely type in? Or would I just go to Baidu and, and uh, say that I want Mao online? Michael, you know what? If, if I were a domain name investor <laughs> and I were interested in, in purchasing Mao.Zaishen or Cat.Online or any of those other Chinese, Chinese character options, I'd have to be ready to work pretty hard to get it to the top of search engine results pages because Chinese consumers, I mean, there are just so many people in China. There are some 650 million people online in China. Right. There are so many web pages in China. So that one word that one character that means cat it's it's not necessarily going to return high quality results in a baidu search um unless it, it either has a ton of seo you know um which forces it to the top of the of of, of the first page of search engine results pages um or you know that the, the content is just so well um publicized right. that it's a no-brainer for everybody who's interested in cats to go well, to the but in the united the cat, states the for an english speaker Cat.com would have infinitely more value than cat.info or cat.biz or, or you know, uh, even cat.tv or cat.me. The .com is just the category killer because people, you know, assume that the dot, a short domain name in the .com has been around longer. It's the authority value. Um, it, it, you know, and, and yes, you would have to work just as hard to have cat.com ranked well as cat.info um for in search engines but one has more value in china which one of these has more value simon <laughs> <laughs> well wearing my tld registry hat I, i'm obviously an advocate for mao dian zai xian the last one on the list there um I, I i think you could create even greater value michael by creating names that are more search query friendly so in China, there'll be many people looking for particular breeds of cats. You'll be having people searching for how do I adopt a cat? Now, in English, you'd never read, well, maybe you, someone would, but typically you wouldn't register I-W-A-N-T-T-O-A-D-O-P-T-A-C-A-T dot C-O-M, I want to adopt a cat. But in Chinese, you can encode that into three or four Chinese characters. It can mm -hmm. be very compact. So there's arguably equal or even greater value for Chinese um, IDN domain names, which encode full search phrases into the very compact Chinese language. Sure, and, and I understand and that, but, but I think that that methodology, that strategy has played out in .com and it's, you know, it's three or four years old. You know, people were, you, were registering those long phrase search, those, those long domain name search phrases like, I want to go to college or I need a degree.com to try and match the search volume. But when you start to segment so small the topic, it becomes difficult to rank it well when, you know, like college.com can talk about everything or cat.com can have a page that's about adopting a cat and use those special characters after the, you know, the, the Mao dot Chinese online here. Um, do you feel like that might be the case as well with with what you're suggesting in the Chinese that maybe going for, you know, a category killer domain name and then having a topic for each page would be a better idea than going, you know, four characters dot Chinese online? 
Yeah, I think I think if you if you compare the user resistance to typing very very long ASCII.coms versus typing surprisingly short Chinese URLs, yeah. um, I think you'll find that user resistance will be higher or would be higher for Westerners or English speakers having to type lots and lots and lots of of, uh, of letters where you probably won't see the same degree of user um, user rejection um, from Chinese consumers or Chinese netizens. So I, I think while the two the two examples are analogous to each other, I, I, I think that you'll see search phrases as Chinese URLs um, play out slightly differently, if not very differently, in Chinese speaking markets. We're only eight days into our general availability now, so we I wish I had more data to share with you. <laughs> but um, this time next year, let's get together again and we'll revisit this uh, this topic and and see exactly what has greater value in terms of um, you know the the big search engine indexes. That sounds good. Um, yeah, and I I think I mentioned two weeks in the intro. It ha- it has only been eight days on the day that we're recording this. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the other thing I wanted to point out was that your uh, TLDs, .chineseonline.chinese website, you can register domain names, the second level domains in simplified Chinese characters and traditional right. Chinese characters and pinyin, right. like you mentioned, and right. in Romanized Cantonese and in English. So I can have, you know, C-A-T dot Chinese online, or I can have, you know, Chinese character. Which one do yeah, you think okay. will be most prevalent? You know, since well, it depends, you, on, depends yeah. on the subject. Um, so um, if there is, I mean, if, if you're, if you're, if there's a particular type of entertainment, for example, like let, let's let's take something cliched like kung fu movies. Mm-hmm. Um, kung fu movies dot online is is likely to be more popular in Hong Kong, for example, than China's mainland. Mm-hmm. So in Hong Kong, th- those guys down there speak Cantonese, then they use the traditional characters, where people in China's mainland speak Mandarin and use the simplified characters. So you probably want to um, think about your target audience um, for the, uh, the domain name that you're registering, or rather the content mm-hmm. that you're planning on populating the domain name with. And if that target market is in Taiwan, for example, or Hong Kong, or almost any Chinatown, in a Western or a non-Chinese country, then you probably want to be thinking about using the traditional characters because practically all people in Chinatowns around the world still use the traditional, the, the old style of writing. Where if your target market is China's mainland, uh, the developing market of China's mainland, then you'll be using simplified Chinese. I, I guess, Michael, yeah. this all sounds very complicated. It doesn't have to be. Um, <laughs> well, it, it does, but it doesn't. Like you're explaining yeah. it very well, Simon. If you're targeting Chinese people with a with a domain name, you want to speak, you want to register in the language that they're most comfortable with. Quite right. Yeah. Quite right. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. And if somebody does a who is lookup for the domain name Mao.com, let's say, and using right. the Chinese character, they'll see that the domain name is actually converted to xn-tg3a.com, um, which is called Punicode. Yeah, exactly. Can people register a domain name both in Punicode and in the Chinese characters? Oh, man. Um, Punicode is complicated and complicates <laughs> our lives. Those of us that are in the IDN world, um, Punicode complicates our, our working lives. Punicode should never have to be seen and probably shouldn't be seen by end users and, and typical web users. Mm-hmm. Um, Punicode is, is is merely the ASCII um, encoding of Unicode characters. So the, 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 special, the special non-ASCII characters that appear in Russian or Korean or Chinese, these can't be handled by DNS servers. The backend server, the DNS server only works in ASCII characters. So for non-ASCII URLs to work correctly, behind the scenes, the browser is converting for the user the Unicode characters, the, 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 the proper language characters, into the encoded ASCII characters. And it's the, it's the Punicode which is being indexed by DNS servers. But typically all of that stuff behind the scenes, that matrix, you know, behind, yeah. behind what looks like reality, that matrix is, um, is hidden from, from the average user. Gotcha. Um, so, so that'd so, be well, like Punicode, showing the user the IP address of the server that a domain name resolves to. They don't care. Oh man, that, that's a great analogy, Michael. You're exactly right. So, 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 so those of us that do work in a technical um, capacity in in internet business and domain names, of course, we deal with IP addresses. Of course, we will have to deal occasionally with Punicodes. But um, for the average user, they'll never see a crazy XN dash dash thing. <laughs> and hopefully, uh, increasingly, the um, the statistics. Um, 
uh, uh, sites that, that are tracking the new GTOs. Increasingly, I hope they'll be able to mask the crazy Punicodes yeah. and simply show users like you and I what the actual Unicode is. Some are doing it already, others aren't. All right, that makes sense. It's, it's all just a, a symptom of, um, or, or an indication, I think, that the, the whole world of IDNs is really quite new and yeah. it's growing, you know, arguably growing very quickly. Um, so, and arguably growing quickly than the first wave of. Uh, yeah. Of, 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 of transitions from IP addresses to domain names. Definitely. But there are some rough edges with this um, <laughs> this breakneck um, development. That, All right, that uh, being uh, one of them. Okay. Um, out of the hundreds of new top-level domains coming out over the next couple of years, do you know how many of them will be Chinese IDNs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When we last checked the market um, for, for applicants for, for, for IDNs, if I recall correctly, there were about 72 applications mm -hmm. for Chinese IDNs. Now, since then, a couple have pulled out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me for for various um, not uninteresting reasons, um, mostly corporate reasons. Mm -hmm. So I think currently we're looking at about sixty nine or seventy um, Chinese IDNs are currently in application. Now of them, about half, if I recall correctly, about thirty two of them um, were brand domains. So dot Walmart, for example, mm -hmm. uh, in Chinese. Um, also, um, one of the big. Um, uh, rich tycoons in Hi in Hong Kong applied for his own TLD. So if you take those brand, what we call brand TLDs out, you've got about 30, which are in various stages of um, openness or various degrees of openness. Mm -hmm. Some, most of those are quite narrowly defined. Dot jewelry in Chinese, for example. Dot watches in Chinese. So when you sift the original 72 down to what you've let, what you got left over, which is uh, generally available, unrestricted, generic TLDs, there are, if I recall correctly, around 12 to 15, mm. um, of which our .chinese online and .chinese website are competing. Gotcha. And and I believe some of the ones that I found are .everyone, .mobile, .organization. Those are all ones that are coming out in Chinese. Yeah, well, we'd think of dot .mobile um, as as being more niche or more more specific than than a general generic. Ah. Um, so, some, for example, dot .world, dot .world in Chinese, we'd we'd think uh, would be um, would be directly competing with dot .chinese online and dot .chinese website. And we know the guys at dot .world in Chinese; they're a terrific group of guys. Um, so the the Chinese IDN community, we all pretty much know each other. It's quite a small. Uh, community in, in China and outside. Yeah. So we're all very supportive and collegiate and uh, while we, we're, we're, we're friendly competitors with each other, we actually have more in common right. than not. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's a relatively small pool of, um, of truly generic, uh, open, unrestricted Chinese TLDs. Makes sense. And we're very happy that uh, we were we were the, the first two to go live. And our friends over at Donuts did get their uh, .games in Chinese uh, out to market um, prior to ours, but um, our dot Chinese online and dot Chinese website uh, are the first two uh, uh, open and generic Chinese TLDs to to to, to come to market. Yep. Yeah. According to DomainNameWire.com, your company TLD Registry has sold ten thousand two hundred and twenty six domain names in each of your two top level domains to the Chinese government. The domains include the names of every city in China with populations over two hundred thousand people. All 3,000 counties, all provinces, all municipalities, all special administrative regions, and a number of key locations such as mountains. Um, in addition, China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology has made it a requirement that all Chinese government websites transition to fully Chinese domain names. Is all of that correct, Simon? Yeah, you've done your research very well, Michael. Um, that, well, that, that, Andrew that's did, cool. but it's quite an accomplishment, you know, to, to have a partner in the Chinese government. How yeah. did that come about? Yeah, well, um, it, it is it is uncommon. Um, and in, in all of my years of doing China business uh, in many sectors other than other than domain names, uh, it, it is very uncommon mm -hmm. for um, for uh, a group uh, inside of the Chinese government to be so interested in well, uh, and, and not just china i think i think we can go across pretty much any government any domain name that's been in existence so far maybe other than dot mil dot edu which are restricted you've done something pretty phenomenal here that nobody else has done and i think registries could potentially learn from going f forward how how was that accomplished yeah well it was accomplished with lots of um you know old-fashioned hard work um the that specifically the, the 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 part of government that um that is the registrant for these domain names, is known as the SDC of Scopesa. 
and that's a, that acronym stands for the Service Development Centre of the State Council Office for Public Sector Reform. Now, SCOPSA, or the State Council Office for Public Sector Reform, was founded in the year 1949, which is the year that Mao Zedong um, founded New China. And uh, SCOPSA is responsible. It's a very, very high-level um, government organisation. It's effectively um, uh, the cabinet, China's cabinet. So it, um, it has a responsibility for naming things in China. Uh, the names of cities and the names of places and the names of things is, is named by, by Scopsa. Scopsa has a number of other uh, very important centralised um, uh, government purposes, but that's one of its purposes. So it, it's, it, it's quite natural that the Service Development Centre of Scopsa is the registrar to government. So government organisations across China, of which we believe there are more than 700,000, um, acquire their domain names from the Service Development Centre of Scopsa. So the Service Development of Scopsa looked at, or um, well, they told us, that um, the, this government's, the, the registrar to government, studied all of the uh, Chinese, the forthcoming Chinese uh, IDN TLDs, mm -hmm. and they believed that ours were, um, were excellent mm -hmm. and um, worthwhile to support the, um, the new government policy to... Um, let's say, strongly encourage uh, Chinese government websites across China to uh, transition to fully Chinese domain names. Um, every other part of Chinese governance is done in Chinese. Chinese laws are written in Chinese. Chinese regulations are in Chinese. Your driver's license is written in Chinese. Why should domain names mm -hmm. be written in English? It, it makes no sense from the Chinese government's perspective. So when you think about it, it isn't really all that radical a policy mm -hmm. that right. now finally... Uh, you know, fully Chinese domain names are uh, fully open and available, and 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 relatively simple to to register and to and to populate with data. It it, it makes sense for um for, for for the business of of government in China to transition to Chinese domain names. Yeah. Now in China, you know that the government has been known to hold a lot of the power to to dictate how things uh, and, and how society is going to run. So it makes sense that this department within China that is in charge of naming selects the best top level domains in Chinese to to, you know, set as a policy going forward. And, you know, you were in the it, it, you were in the right place at the right time. Can this example be taken to other countries, you know, Japanese, Hebrew, Greek and and have this kind of success? You know, is this a model for other registries um, that are launching IDNs to, to model after? I think it should be a model, Michael, or at least that sounds a little boastful. It's not meant to be. But I think um, those of us in the IDN world need to do everything we possibly can to encourage the uptake of IDNs because it, it's IDNs are good for people. Mm -hmm. IDNs are good for people that don't speak English. Um, the, 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 the hegemony of, of English over the non-English speaking world's internet uh, is, is quickly coming to an end. In fact, it has come to an end as far as the big global brands are concerned. You know, every every big American or European brand that's in China uses its localized Chinese name. It can't sell things in China unless it has a localized Chinese name that can be pronounced by Chinese consumers or by Greek consumers in Greece. So um, I, I think that, you know, business has already um, uh, uh, realized and, and that, 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 that it is necessary to localize to your local non-English speaking marketplaces, culture and language. Yeah. There's no reason why domain names should be carved out from this perfectly sensible uh, and respectful approach to doing multinational business. Now, is the uh, Chinese government concerned that they will not have control over .Chinese online and .Chinese website? You know, if, if, uh, if something goes on, you know, a government can shut down their own CCTLD. They can shut down .CN because they're in control of it. But with .Chinese uh, online, they can't shut it down. You know, they can block every single website in that extension, you know, because they control the internet in China, but they can't shut it down. Um, it, have have they mentioned that that's a concern with, you know, partnering with the registry? No, no, we've demonstrated, Michael, um, or TLD registry has, has demonstrated that we're good partners to China. We've demonstrated, you know, collective, many decades of collective experience of not just working um, in China, but living in China. Mm -hmm. So we understand the, 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 the special local um, cultural uh, differences that exist in China. China's a very, very proud nation. Mm -hmm. China's a country that um, 
you know, that, that, that is rightfully proud of the contributions that it's made to world history and world technology and world language and, you know, really good food for the last 5,000 years. So those of us that um, have made our careers China in China, we, we work in China in a very respectful way. Um, so, so no, the, our, our partners at, at the Service Development Centre of, of Scopes are, have not expressed any concern that we're going to come in like vandals and um, you know terrorize or hurt the feelings of the Chinese people. Um, China does have its own methods um, of ensuring that content that is not uh, in China's national interests uh, is uh, is not is not available inside of China. Um, there are differing opinions as to you know how right or wrong that is, but uh, it's true that many parts of the world have uh, have systems that uh, that limit access to um, to content that's not in the national interest. And China is a sovereign country, so it's entirely China's people and China's government's uh, decision as to as to how they choose to run their internet. Yeah, and we're just we're just very happy to be partners with them. I would think, as you know, if I were working at TLD Registry and the Chinese government came to uh, me and said, "We would like to use your two top level domains. We'd like ten thousand two hundred twenty six in this one and ten thousand two hundred twenty six in this one." I might be inclined to say, "Sure, take them for free," because this shows that the Chinese government is um, is uh, uh, dedicated to our TLDs over other ones. We get 20,000 plus domain names registered right off the bat. Um, you know, the sooner websites can get up, the better. It, was that actually the case or did the Chinese government pay for the domain names? Yeah, no, we've invested a tremendous, I mean, for six years now, we've been building the business with absolutely no income. So we're now literally, well, we're, we have one month of land rush and then eight days of general availability into revenue generation. So um, the investments which we've made in... Um, uh, in our in our business and in the application fees to, to ICANN and staffing uh, and branding for the last six years are very, very considerable. So we don't give uh, free domain names to anybody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, let's talk about how English-only speaking domain name investors might be able to evaluate this opportunity. What steps would somebody like myself who primarily only speaks English take if I want to know what and how to register dot chinese online and dot chinese website domain names mm -hmm. what's what's the general process simon uh-huh okay so the first thing as much as i love google translate um i would first of all caution our friends in the domain name investment community to uh use google translate as a guide but do not trust google translate for your important business decisions uh it is frequently right it's also frequently wrong um to be frank, to seriously invest in any IDN, not only in the Chinese IDNs, but in any IDN, I think those of us in the IDN community would counsel that an investor hires or partners with a native language speaker. Yeah. Now, fortunately for us, the Chinese education system produces extremely competent, well-educated graduates, which have streamed into foreign countries and the universities of foreign countries in their millions. So in any city, first or second or third tier city of the United States or Australia or Europe, it's not difficult to find Chinese undergrads or postgrads in your local community, which are not only willing and able to help with local language advice, but are enthusiastic to do so. Because for many Chinese undergrads and postgrads, to get an opportunity to interact with um, you know, the people of their host country is really valuable. Mm -hmm. And outside of their university campus, not all that common. So, you know, Michael, if you were the average American domain name investor and you were interested in, you know, joining the, the Chinese domain name land rush or the Russian domain name land rush that the Russian IDNs have done exceptionally well also, the first thing you do is you get someone from that country to help you with the language. Mm -hmm. Now, second thing I'd counsel is remember that being Chinese is not necessarily a qualification. Because if I, if I was to grab the average Australian on the street of Sydney or Melbourne, I'm Australian, so I'm criticizing my culture. I'm allowed to criticize my culture. If I was to grab the average Australian, the average Australian doesn't have really superb language skills. I dare say that the average American doesn't have really superb language skills. 
the average person in the world typically doesn't have really superb language skills. We can all speak our language, of course, but most of us aren't trained in English or in Chinese or in Russian. We're, we're, we're trained as, you know, as engineers or as managers, and we don't necessarily do really great in our language and literacy classes. So if you really want to be doing business uh, in, in, in Chinese audience or Russian audience for that matter, make sure that you're getting a Chinese person or a Russian person that is very competent in the language. A great place to look is the local uh, journalism schools in universities, the local PR and marketing schools in universities. All of these um, schools in local universities have plenty of really qualified, very literate, very wordy mm -hmm. Chinese undergrads or postgrads. Okay, so you found great. So, so you can look at community colleges. You can look at Absolutely. local colleges. You can call the journalism departments, the the masters in business departments, and and ask them to post something. Maybe uh, maybe they'll s ask you to send a flyer. You got. You it. can post. You know, hey, I'm looking it. for somebody I with native language speaking skills born and raised maybe in China or Russia, and now living in the United States. Um, and you can even put on there, I'm willing to pay $50 an hour because you probably sure. won't need more sure. than a few hours. And whatever kid sees that, it's going to be quick to call you. Right, right. And, and we've just counseled for years now for our friends and, and colleagues, don't, don't go and grab Cindy from accounting because Cindy from accounting may be a whiz with tax planning, but Cindy from accounting maybe only has tabloid language skills at best. So Cindy from accounting is usually not the right person to be thinking about, you know, making sometimes substantial, you know, decisions on creation of domain names for, you know, investment and content and content purposes. Yeah, and, and maybe, it, maybe it's good questions to ask are, do you read native language newspapers? Do you right. read what's going on in China if you're looking at .chinese online and .chinese website? Right, exactly right. Or you could, for example, take um, any of the of the really big uh, domain name sales, for example, the numeric sales, mm -hmm. the, the five eights, for example. And you could ask Cindy from accounting, why is five eights so valuable? Mm -hmm. And would four eights be as valuable or more valuable mm -hmm. or less valuable than five eights? Right. And if Cindy is, is really someone who understands the, uh, the, the nature of the language and, and the roots of the language, then she will tell you that, oh no, no, five eights is very valuable because in Chinese language, in Mandarin, five sounds like wu, which sounds like wo, which sounds, which means me or I. And eight sounds like ba, which sounds like fa, which means wealth in Cantonese. So <laughs> I, rich, 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 makes better sense than having four, which might mean death or corpse rich. So it's better to be I rich than death rich. Right. So for this reason, five eights is particularly auspicious. So if Cindy can answer, you know, a, yeah. a simple numeric domain name in Chinese culture, then, then that's a good asset test, you know? Definitely. Yeah. So step one, find yourself a good partner to work yep. with. Step two, think about the things that Chinese consumers like to do. So Chinese consumers like to do a bunch of different things and a bunch of similar things that Americans or Europeans like to do. Know, for example, that the, the, the number one activity out of the home in China is eating. So any domain names around eating, around food, are going to be really great. And remember also that Chinese people tend to search in phrases. So, you know, Shanghai noodles isn't necessarily as valuable a domain name as Beijing's best Shanghai noodles online, for example. Um, think about um, things that Chinese people like to do, such as tourism and travel. You know, Chinese people haven't had the opportunity since 1949 for various reasons to widely travel outside of China. But but now Chinese people are free to travel almost everywhere in the world and, and not just travel as parts of organized uh, tour groups from universities or companies, but tour as, you know, as pleasure tra uh, tourists. So, so anything around tourism and travel is really hot. I'm just referring to a list I prepared earlier. Sure. Um, Chinese people love to watch TV, love to watch movies. So domain names such as uh, American TV comedies might be a really great domain name. British period TV dramas. Now that's a crazy long dot com if yeah. written in ASCII in English, but in Chinese, British period TV dramas is three or four characters. You know, a really tight, concise little URL. And uh, by the way, all of these domain names, they're not on our premium name list. They're available to register right now. Think about um, weddings and families and relations. So, you know, in China, they don't just have the word for aunt or uncle. Every aunt 
on your father's side or your mother's side in various generations has a completely different word in Chinese. So based on the sorts of gifts you might buy for various aunts or uncles at different times of the year, different festivals, these would also make really great domain names. So think about life in China and the sorts of things that occupy Chinese people's mind, uh, Chinese people's thoughts when they're shopping and when they're enjoying themselves. These all make really great domain names. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so now that they know you know, what What kind of help an average non-Chinese speaking investor might need, what things to focus on, um, they generate their list, then they can go to um, one of the registrars that that has signed up to work with your registry to buy them. I went to your website, I saw a list that included 101101domain.com, Hexanet, Instra, IP Mirror, Key Systems, uh, Marcaria and name.com. Are those the registrars where people can register them? Yeah, we have, uh, as of current, the current count is about 40, I think. 40 okay, registrars. so that's uh, just uh, a few of them. That's just a few of 40, yeah. So so um, a quick uh, Google search for .chinese online registrars will uh, will return that uh, that page of registrars. All right, Every and I see a general cost of between $39 to register a .chinese online to $45. Is that generally yeah, the Yeah, yeah, we've seen we've seen prices from about 30 36 38 $39 up to $50. Mm -hmm. And remember of course that many Chinese registrars are also uh, enthusiastically selling out domain names. So, um, there may be an argument for registering through a Chinese uh, registrar or through a European registrar, mm -hmm. or an American registrar. Okay, so if you hire somebody that does speak Chinese and you go to a Chinese registrar, it might be uh, uh, advantageous to make the purchase there. Yeah, the biggest registrar in China is Xinnet, or Xinwong, which means new, new net. Uh, and they're, a, they're an enthusiastic uh, partner of ours. 35.com, 35.com um, is, is also a very, very large um, uh, registrar in China. They have 1,000 direct salespeople working in their building. In, uh, in the southern city of Xiamen and about 40,000 resellers across China. The scale is really gigantic. Um, it's almost like, you know, GoDaddy scale across a half a dozen different um, registrars in, in China. And we, uh, we have all of those, all of those registrars um, selling our, um, our Chinese domain names. Great. You know, I mentioned that we discussed um, .chinese online and .chinese website in a past domain Sherpa discussion. Adam Dicker said that he was registering, I think, thousands of them and that he had found a native Chinese speaker and they were going through the list and and making their reservation. Um, you know, that's a big testament to the TLDs that that you're selling, uh, Simon. But I think investors also want to know what the registry is doing to make it successful. You know, we talked about uh, so they, they can go to NTLD stats. They can look up how many are being registered. They can see, you know, just we have the discussion about the Chinese government supporting them. Um, but I, I think domain investors also want to know what about, you know, is is there press or media purchases or marketing that you're doing? Do you um, do you have large corporations? You mentioned uh, Vansel that has taken up the domain name. Um, you know, are there smaller companies that are migrating to them? Um, so it's an entire ecosystem. What can you tell investors about your registry going forward with respect to marketing and how that will drive continued growth of the top level domains? Yeah, Michael, marketing is marketing and branding is so, so important. And and marketing and branding has been built into the DNA of our registry from day one. Um, we're only trying to uh, equal the gold standard set by uh, the guys at Dot Club, who I think are arguably the best marketers in the in the in the English uh, new GTLD program. Um, what 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 me and of course, many, many viewers of Domain uh, Sherpa would be familiar with the uh, very wide scale marketing that um, the Dot Club is 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 engaging in in, in the uh, in the English speaking world, we have a similar degree of marketing in the Chinese speaking world. In the last 12 months, since April last year, we've generated over 1,400 media stories about our dot Chinese online and dot Chinese website, and it's increased. It continues to increase by um, dozens, if not hundreds, every month. In fact, uh, just yesterday, we um, I saw a media report uh, an hour before our conversation, in which I think I've listed out uh, 40 new media clippings just overnight. Uh, on the first day back to um, back to work for most Chinese people after the May Day vacation. Wow. Um, so, so we have a really, really broad um, public awareness campaign mm -hmm. through Chinese media. And China's media, as many people doing business in China and all sorts of sectors would know, Chinese media is very 
are very effective at um, at introducing a new product or service. If um, Chinese people tend to trust what's in their media, so when stories appear in Chinese media, they have uh, quite a lot of credibility. Um, we're also in China all the time. I, I mentioned earlier, I'm flying down to Hong Kong tomorrow morning. I'm spending the next three weeks in China. My, my colleagues and I usually spend two weeks of every uh, every month in China and Hong Kong uh, and the other parts of the Chinese speaking world. We have a team of guys and girls in Beijing and in Hong Kong. Um, we're giving a talk this Thursday at a managing IP magazine event in Hong Kong. We're exhibiting at the Inter Trade Show, which has 10,000 delegates from the intellectual property world coming into Hong Kong all of next week. Uh, we're exhibiting and speaking, keynoting at the Momentum event in Hong Kong next Wednesday. We're then on a roadshow through all of our Chinese registrars. We're then exhibiting at uh, Hosting Con, the first Hosting Con in China, in Shanghai in about two and a half weeks. So that's just the next three weeks. Great. We're back again one week after that for a, uh, a partner roadshow through um, one of our Chinese registrar partners. And then the week after that, we're off to the ICANN meeting in, in London. So wow. like many of us in the new GTLD world, we travel a lot, we talk a lot uh, about our domain names. And um, we uh, we absolutely are relentless with um, with talking about our, our domain name products in uh, in the Chinese speaking world. So I think domain name investors can see the results that we've been able to generate. And I think the general level and quality of branding and marketing that I think is is on the public record. I think that it's quite high, um, and and that's absolutely. Um, as I say, baked into the DNA of, uh, of, our, of our entire business plan. Our marketing must be excellent. Yep. All right, Simon, here's the final question for you. I, like most domain name investors, um, it, let me qualify that by saying, you know, in the United States, make a sometimes incorrect decision about a company merely based on the domain name they choose. For example, I might look at a company with a .NET and think, oh, they couldn't get the .com. In the case of TLD Registry, your company, you operate on internetregistry.info. Why did you pick a .info to run your online company? Well, .info is one, are the old new GTLDs, one of the old new GTLDs. So we think it's really important to eat our own dog food. So <laughs> while we continue to resolve to internetregistry.info in English, in Chinese, and Chinese-speaking markets, we've already transitioned to yuming.zaixian, which literally means domain names dot online ah. and you mean Dian Jungwenwong, which is domain names dot Chinese website. So for the majority of you know consumers that see our domain names, they don't see the dot info. Um, they see the uh, they see the dot Chinese online dot Chinese website. But but it, the non facetious answer, Michael, is that we we think it's important to eat our own dog food. So we deliberately selected a a, a new GTLD, an old new GTLD. Fair enough. All right, if you have additional questions about China, about Chinese TLDs or .Chinese online or .Chinese website, please post them in the comments section below this video and I'll ask Simon to come back and answer as many as he can as he's traveling all over the world in the upcoming couple of weeks. Simon, if someone wants to contact you to partner with your organization in some way, what's the best way they can reach you? Oh, domains at internetregistry.info is uh, the simplest um, address that, 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 that comes directly to the senior management team. Fantastic. Simon Cousins, Chief Marketing Officer for TLD Registry. Thank you for coming on the show, educating investors about the Chinese domain name investing opportunity. And thanks for being a domain Sherpa. And thank you, Michael, for the fantastic service you provide to the domain name community through Domain Sherpa. Thank you, Simon. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next thank time. You.